Hi everybody, so um, my name is Lauren, as you know, most of you who follow me, and I was really excited to teach you guys a beginner's ballet class because um, last time I taught, a lot of you made comments that you couldn't keep up or that you weren't a dancer and that you wanted to try it out for the first time or maybe you're coming back to ballet and it's been a long time. So I'm excited to teach this class. Uh, this is just beginner ballet. Very, very basic, um, but still fun because I'm gonna play some of my favorite music, just like pop songs and stuff like that. So um, I want it to be very approachable. Don't judge yourself. If you have a hard time keeping up, that's okay. Um, you don't need much. You just need comfortable clothes, some socks, uh, and something to hold on to. So we're gonna start with our left hand uh, on the bar or counter in this case. And we're gonna put our feet in first position. So first position, the toes just shoot out as far as they can go. It shouldn't be um, a very aggressive stance. You should be holding and lifting from um, your butt and lifting up through the leg and just enough so that you can feel all of your toes on the ground. And you should be very relaxed. Just take a deep breath in. Now the stomach is held all the time in ballet. We hold it not in a way that makes it feel tight. We don't want to suck in. We just want to feel pressure in our stomach, like 20% pressure and just a, just a general lift. But we don't want the shoulders to be affected. We don't want our neck to get strained. We want to just relax with the upper body and lift with the center. Our hands should be very light on the bar, almost as if you don't need it. And if possible, we should let go whenever we can, because it just helps us stay on our balance. So we start in first position. This is first position with our arm low, and we're just gonna do what we call a demi-plie, which is half bend. So we're gonna um, bring our arm out and back in as we bend our knees. We're gonna go down and stretch, and demi and stretch. Then we're gonna do one grand plie with the same arm, grand plie, which is just a bigger one, up, arm front, and side. Then we're gonna go port de bras forward, which means we bring up our arm and we reach forward. Then we create a stretch for our legs and we curl up. So we're gonna feel the backs of our legs fe feeling tight. You just go down as far as you can hold it. The shoulders don't go. We keep them back and we keep the hips right where they are. We don't want to swing back or swing forward. We want to stay straight and let the body bend forward and curl back up. And then we're going to bend back as far as we can go. And we're going to bring the arm around as we recover. Okay? So that was two little bends. One grand plie. Arm forward and side. We're going to go port de bras forward and up and back. Then we go to second position, we're gonna do the same thing. Two little bends of the knees. Good. One big one. Forward and up. We're gonna go into the bar stretching. Now we wanna feel everything on the side of our body stretched, but not curled and crunched. We wanna keep length through our neck the whole time and our fingers should be beautiful. You should see all of, all of your fingers and then this is a hard one because we have to let go of the bar, but that's okay. We're just gonna bend away. And what helps us with this, if you feel like you're gonna fall over, we remember we keep the stomach tight, but this front arm will also come in front of us a little bit. So it's not behind us changing our shoulders. It just stays in front of us and recovers, okay? Then we're gonna go to fourth position, which means one foot goes right in front of the other. So it goes toe, heel, toe, heel, and we make a box with our feet. We don't want to turn any of them in. They're always turned out. And you can make a bigger fourth position if it's easier for your hips to start, or you can make a smaller one. No judgment here. But ideally, there should be one foot between. <coughs> and we do the same. Two demis, one grand plie, arm in front of us, right, right below your chest and above your belly button, and then forward for the bra, up, and this time let's not go back, let's rise up, and we'll take it to fifth, 
two demis, one grand plie, arm forward and up. We're gonna do a circle around with the body, keeping the knees straight, and we're gonna rise up, okay? Okay, I trust you guys, and I'm gonna do it with you, so don't worry if you have a hard time keeping up. Yes, we're listening to Adele. Seven, eight. We go demi, stretch, demi, stretch. Grand, plie, front, side. Good, point of rock. When the rain is blowing up, your face. And back.
demi stretch. Two times, demi. Third time, we'll rise up with the arm and down, and then we do grand plie again, what we just learned. Side, we go out, in, demi, out, in, demi, we go out, in, rise with the arm, grand plie, seven, eight, then we take it back, the toes start to the back, we want to make sure that everything is staying really strong here, we don't want to lead with the heel, that's a no-no, and we also don't want to pitch back with our hips, we don't want to dip, so we stay tall, remember what I said about 20% body, just held, toes going out, and we just reach it behind us. The only thing working is my turnout. Good. So then with our demi, we do two, one with a releve, grand plie, and then we're going to do port de bras forward again, what we just did. Port de bras forward. This time we're going to go straight back out, and we're going to rise up, and demi, and we start back, the whole thing reversed. Got it?
Jemmy. Side. And grand plie. To the front. Demi. Front. It burns worse without music. It's good. This is the last one. Grand plie. Take it forward. This should feel good. And rise up. Yay. Good, how do we do? Now, a couple of things to remember when we're just starting out. Grand plie, when we bring our arm down, it should never get between our legs because this looks like, it kind of looks um, like a monkey. I don't think that's good. So we lift up with our arm and hand and it should stay outside of your knee the whole time. And then as you come up, they're connected. Another thing that we always think of with poor bras is the head, my head and chin are connected to my wrist. So as my head moves, so does my hand, almost like um, you're a puppeteer with your, own, with your own hand. You just imagine that there's a string there. Exactly, good. Now we're gonna do the same thing, tendu, but we're gonna do it in fifth position, not first position. So let's start in fifth. We're gonna go very easy. Arm side. Now another thing to mention when our arm is side, we can't forget about it. We can't let it uh, relax or get detached from our mind. We always have it held and it comes from our back. So you should feel your shoulder blades as you lift your chest. That's all it is, as if you're wearing a beautiful necklace. You lift your chest and it's, it's held like a wing. You've, we've all seen Swan Lake. It's like you have a wing attached to your back and the wing can't die, or else, I mean, I guess you can imagine that you're flying. I like to imagine that I'm flying. Exactly. So, our arm will be side, we have our wing, we have our necklace, and we're gonna do four tendus front. So we go out, in, out, in, out, in, four times, then I wanna shoot it out and freeze, fifth, shoot it out and freeze, fifth. Then we're gonna do eight quick ones, in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pour the bra forward again, forward. And up with the arm. We go out, closing back. Out, closing front. Out, closing back. Out, closing front. We go out to the back. Out to the front. Now eight quick ones. It's just math. Six, seven, eight, and then we're gonna do one with plie, plie to change. It's not too complicated, right? We're going simple. So we have four plain ones, two slow ones, and eight fast ones with a port de bras to the front. Four side, two slow, eight fast with a plie. Same thing back as the front. Four, two, eight, port de bras forward. And then let's do, let's just do plie. Su, su, su to new, which means change, to the left, okay? Let's go. Arm first, then open, four. Six, seven, eight, forward, 
four, freeze, bend, freeze, now eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plie side, to the back. For sure, if you haven't felt anything yet. Um, now we're going to do a dégagé. Dégagé is the same thing as a tendu, but it comes off the floor just slightly. So we don't want, we're not going for a big batma, we're going for a tiny little size of a quarter off the ground. So it just flicks up and flicks back. Now I think the most important thing to remember in a dégagé is now that our foot is released off, this is what we are trying to avoid the sickle. So remember in Tandu when I said start with the heel, that still applies. You start with the heel and then when you can't go any further, we don't let this relax and our toes rise up off the ground alone. We keep the shape, let the toes flicking off the ground be the ignition. That's, that's like a match being struck and that brings our foot off and we want to hold it back with the tops of our legs here, so we're wrapping like a circle around. We want to let the force be coming from below, like you're lighting a match, but then we freeze it with the top of our leg. So it should have a little bit of a snap, and that's kind of what makes it fun. Or else it's just like, you're just moving your leg around. You can do this all day, and there's nothing all that interesting about it. So we wanna make it interesting, make it spicy, and get the snap. So let's do something. Let's just do four regular ones. One, two, three, four regular dégagés. Then we're gonna do one with a pique, which means you go out, um, lightly tap the floor, and let it spring off and come back to fifth. So we have one, two, three, four, pique, and fifth. Then we go side, same thing, closing back. Back, front, back, front, pique, and to fifth back. We have four, pique, and fifth. Then we're gonna do on cloche. We're gonna go out, to the front, to the back, to the front, to the back, one more pique, and fifth. Got it? So we have four, one pique. Four to the side, one pique. Four to the back, one PK. Then we go back, front, back, PK, fifth. Okay, you can follow me. I usually get it wrong, but nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Okay, ready? <laughs> We're 
going to do eight, same dégagés, eight dégagés side, two relevés, and down. Eight left foot, two relevés, then four, one relevé, four, plié, and down. Okay? Same music.
Now let's do a balance. We're going to plie. Reach over the toes. Rise up. And take the hand off. Now, I think a mistake most people make is thinking that you have to have a perfect alignment to balance. You don't. You really don't. You can dance <laughs> and stay up there. The strength is in my ankles and it's coming up through my legs and I'm going down with my stomach. So I have this feeling on the bottom and the top can do whatever you want it to do. It's Monday, might as well dance. Yay. So that's the easiest way to teach this. So we've been going still kind of fast. So remember, first position, we have our toes in front of us. We just shoot them out to the side. That's first. Let's keep our arm low. And let's do a rond de jambe is basically a series of tendus, but you've connected the uh, middle part of the step. And eventually, it looks like one full movement instead of broken up ones. So we're going to start tendu front. Take it to the side, take it to the back, and back to first. Front, side, back, first. Then we're gonna try to smooth it out a little bit. Front, side, back, first, and then with nothing in between. Two, and then we're gonna go off the floor to first position. Don't do this with your hand, I don't know why I did that. It was supposed to be my toe. We'll keep our arm low. We're gonna reverse the whole thing. We go back, side, front, first, back, side, front, first, back, side, front, first, back, and off the ground, first. Then let's do grand plie again. Do our releve again. This time we're going to look to the right and to the center. Open the arms like you're opening a, I don't know, it could be sparkling wine or champagne. Or if you don't drink, it can just be the grape juice that's sparkling, whatever. So now we're going to go to the other side. We go front, side, back, and first. Front, side, back. And first, we connect in between a little more. And then we do seamless two off the ground and we reverse. Okay? You can follow me. If you're feeling advanced, you can make up your own arms. Totally allowed. Maya, I know it's raining. Just wants to be beautiful. She goes. Five. Six, seven, eight. We go front, side, back, first. Front, side, back, first. Now try to get rid of the bumps. Seamless, around, reverse. Back, side, front, back.
Rise up. Look to the left. Front. Open the arms. Good. Good. Okay. Now let's do frappe. So frappe means to strike. And I like to think of it like um, your foot is a snake and like a really fast rattlesnake and it can, or a snapping turtle and it can go in the blink of an eye. Nobody can see it. So in order to get that feeling, we have to break it down. So we always start frappe or I always start frappe with tendu side. So we go tendu side, just like we've been doing, coup de pied. So coup de pied, the, how do I explain this? The heel will be forward and the toes will be wrapped around your ankle. So we can start it flexed. That's a good way to start, flexing the toes up. And then you just wrap it around the ankle like you're giving your ankle a hug with your foot. Now, we want to watch for the hip. We don't want the hip to have our knee facing forward. We want to hold our turnout muscles and squeeze our butt so that we get that crease and everything scoops out to the side. Now, if we break down a frappe, we end up in a position sort of like this. Our toes release, but the ankle stays pointed and it strikes the floor and it wraps back in. So it goes toe, strike, in. Toe, strike, in. Toe, strike, in. Toe, strike, in. Got it? Now let's do it with, you know, more seamlessly. We're gonna strike out and wrap it back. Strike out, wrap it back. And then we're just gonna beat it back, front, back, front. So we go down, out, in, down, out, in four times. Then without the in between step, we go front, back, front, back, and we wait. Toe out, in, toe out, in, toe out, in four times. Out, out, back, front, back, front, and to the side. Now, for me, what burns the most in this step is actually my supporting butt. The supporting butt is held because we never want this to get loose. We hold this side strong as this leg is moving around. The more this leg moves around, the stronger we have to be here, hence the burn. Okay, so here's our music. We go toe, out, in, toe, out, in, toe, out, in, toe, out, in, strike, out, in, out, in, back, front, back, front, good, toe, out, in, toe, out, in, toe, out, in, toe, out, in, strike, Back, front, back, wait, we go 
down, out, in. Four. Strike. Two. Back, front, back, front. Down, out, in. Two. Three. Four. Last one, down, out, in, down, out, in, three, four, then two, front, back, front, plie. Good, okay, very nice. Now I wanna teach you guys petite butt ma. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Petite butt ma is just like we started our frappe, we're gonna start in coup de pied, our, our little ankle hug. And those beats that we just did, back, front, we're gonna do those slowly. We go back, we take it front, keeping the knee out. Back, front, back, front, back, front. Now we're gonna go ideally as fast as we can. Don't judge yourself on this, but it's kind of fun. I, when I do it with little kids, they always have a good time going fast. So we go, and fast, five, six, seven, eight. We slow it down again. Back, front, back, front, back, front, back, front. Fast as you can go. Out, and we change the other side. Now, what we can't forget what, as we're going fast is the foot. We never stop pointing this. Honestly, in ballet it stays, our foot stays in the same position almost the entire time. When we're closing it against the floor, it changes and it breaks out of position. But if our foot is off the ground, our toes should always be lifted higher than our heel. So we're in a locked position all the time. And honestly, a trick of the trade is that if you're thinking of engaging that foot all the time, the rest of your leg can relax because point A being your foot and point B being your hip allows you to move faster. If you think about your knee, if you think about your thigh, your calf, all of the things happening between your foot and your hip, if you think about all of those things, you don't really have a lot of time. You can move faster if you think of moving quickly from point A to point B. So our way of moving more efficiently is to keep engaged in our mind Keep that connection with our toe at all times and then no matter what dance step you're doing you have your um, your leg connected to your body and you know exactly where it is you know, there's never a moment where the energy flies out and you don't feel it like you know exactly your boundaries you know your boundaries because your foot is the very last point and you want that point to be the quickest thing in your mind so we never really lose sight of that Petit butt ma, we just do four normal ones. One, two, three, four. Actually, let's do eight. Five, six, seven, eight. And then eight fast ones. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight slow, eight fast, and then we'll zoom in. And we're going to do it to the same ladies. All right, ready? Beyonce, let's go.
So to move quickly, we don't want to start gripping up our hip. We want it to come naturally from the place our leg is strongest. So with that knee being side and that hip being relaxed, we should be able to move point A and point B in unison. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Let's do, um, what do we have time for? Speaking of hips, we're going to do a step that I found very unfun when I first started ballet called Ranjam en l'air, but hopefully I can explain it to you in a way without actually physically being with you and holding on to your leg. Hopefully I can explain it in a way that you can relax your hip and you can feel the right muscles when you're doing this step and not be crying in pain. So Ranjam en l'air, let's go low. Let's not take it up to 90 degrees yet. Let's keep it at 45. We're gonna go five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna brush it out to the side, side, and like, just to keep it happy, like you're scooping ice cream out of a really frozen ice cream container. You know when it's really hard to get out? Imagine that you're scooping it out and pressing it back. Scooping it out and pressing it back. Scooping it out and pressing it back, exactly. So. Five, six, seven, eight. We go out, scoop out, scoop out, scoop out. Let's plie in second, rise up, plie in second, brush it out. Now we're gonna reverse the scoop, but nothing really changes. Our leg is still side. So we're gonna scoop inside now to the outside, inside to outside, inside to outside, inside to outside, plie. Relevé, plié, and we'll take it to the other side. Okay. Fifth position. Oh, oh, oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go out. Scoop. Three, four, five. Plie, rise up, plie, out, scoop in. Scoop, plie, rise up, take it to the other side. Two, three, four. So we start with coup de pied, which we all just knew. We take it front and we scoop it up our leg into passe. And then just like we do with our tondus, we're gonna lead with our heel, try to keep our knee back and present it to the front and bring it back to fit, okay? So we go coup de pied, coup de pied, coup de pied, passe, and front to the fit. Coup de pied, coupe, passe. I think let's.
let's not go to the side today because we've done a lot of hips already. So we're just going to go passe up into the back. We do coup de pied, passe, développe back behind us, and fifth, coup de pied, passe, bring it down to fifth. Okay? We're going to go twice through. We'll bring it front, passe, back, passe, front, passe, back, passe, and now we're going to do a passe and releve, so we go up with a standing leg, up on our toes, ideally on the big toe, not the little ones, and we bring it up to passe, and we're going to try to let go, and remember that our balance is in the lower part of our body. We should be able to do whatever we want with the top. This is where we have our strength, here and here. Okay. Ready, fifth position. Grand 
fifth. Ground ball ball, fifth, and we're gonna do a little releve down to the side, as high as you can go. Three, little releve. Then we take it back, back behind us. Two, make sure you have space and don't kick anything. Little releve, and then let's finish it with our balance. And we turn to the other side. Okay. Fifth position. Let's keep our arm in high fifth the whole time. I think it's easier. Just keep our, our arms high. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about okay, that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass. Honestly, that we bass, should just do an improv trouble. dance class. Okay, <laughs> ready? Arm up. Kick. Two. Three. Little relevant. To the side. for us in quarantine here. So I hope you guys are doing well and hanging in, keep moving. Um, there's a lot of really fun stuff out there. There's a lot of really good classes to take. I'll be doing this again next Monday. And if you want to do some choreography with me on Wednesday, I'll be making things up in the backyard. Hopefully it won't be raining. If it's raining, I guess we'll just have to do it inside. We'll figure out a way. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for tuning in. You can um, write me your questions if you want and give me some feedback. If you want it to be harder or easier or if you want me to explain a step better, I can definitely work on my communication. And thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye, guys. <laughs>